Which of the following complications is most likely associated with this patient's ECG findings? AFib with rapid ventricular response, torsades de point, complete heart block, V-fib, or sinus bradycardia? A 30-year-old man undergoes a routine physical examination. He is asymptomatic and has no significant pa past medical history. His ECG reveals a short PR interval, a delta wave, and widened QRS complex. The patient has, is surprised by these findings and wonders if there's any potential risk associated with these um, ECG, find, ECG abnormalities. Which of the following complications is most likely associated with this patient's ECG findings? Okay, so with the delta wave, that's pretty characteristic of uh, Wolf, Parkinson, White. Um, and so that's when you have a really fast or really uh, fast, I guess you can say uh, like a, um, it's an irregular ventricular response. And so I would say, I don't know 100% what the associated complications could be for this. I would say um, not torsion to the point, not Santa's bradycardia. Um, I don't know 100%. I'm, yeah. Okay, what I would probably say is something with um, AFib with revaporative ventricular response is my gut. Okay. Um, I don't remember this at all being related to heart block. Um. Yeah, I don't remember this being ventricular fibrillation. Actually, I kind of want to change it to VFib. Dave, uh, talk to me why you want to change it. So your gut says A, so you got to give me discrete, concrete evidence of why you want to change it to D. So Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is a, is a symptom of the ventricles is what I'm thinking. And so I don't know why you would have atrial fibrillation with, ventric with ventricles, um, with ventricle issues. And so I'm thinking like v ah, VFib? I'm thinking it's an issue with the conduction system. And okay. so I don't know, actually. I actually have no idea. Okay, so, so you got to ask yourself, how 100 you got to be 100% sure, right? That's my test taking strategy that I want to teach you, right? If you're not 100% sure, then I want you to keep it. Okay. I'm not 100% sure, so I, I, I guess I'll keep it. Okay. So let's talk about this a little bit, okay? So the reason why I want to keep you know, I want you to keep following the same, even though you missed this question, right? But you got to be consistent, right? So mm -hmm. if you're not 100% sure about your gut, then I don't want you to change it, right? Because on a statistical standpoint, you're going to more than likely be correct, okay? okay. So um, I think you were hinting at it. I think your logic was close, right? So it's it's an accessory pathway, right? WPW is accessory pathway, okay? So if it bypasses the AV node, right? You can get a re intrant tachycardia in rare cases get V-fib, okay? Yeah. Um, and so the AFib, right? This is kind of where it gets confusing, right? AFib can happen, right? Um, but it's not as common as V-fib. So both can happen actually, because when you talk about a re um, a, um, a conduction issue in the heart, right? Remember, it all works together, right? In a sense, right? So a lot of the times, right, that's why I would have gotten down to A and D, to be honest with you. And I would have probably picked A um, because, for you know, in my mind, A is a little bit less um, of an issue than VFib. VFib is very bad. That's right? what I was thinking. Like, I was thinking VFib is way too um, serious. Exactly. For, and AFib is way more common to happen and more likely to happen. Exactly. So I would have picked A, right? Me personally, with my gut, I would have picked A. And I knew that it was a, I knew WPW has a re-entrance and it bypasses the, the AV node, but I couldn't remember which uh, arrhythmia has more likelihood of happening, but apparently it's VFib. But definitely for sure, the learning point here, right? There's a couple of learning points, right? It can happen between either. It just happens more with VFib. And then the learning point number two, right? To keep it short and sweet on a test taking thing is you got to keep your gut um, unless you're hundred percent sure, or else what's going to end up happening happening, um, if you don't kind of maintain kind of that test taking strategy is you're going to start changing answers all over the place. So, and so we don't always, that. if I have had, if I don't have a reason to be like, okay, my gut was this, but now seeing this new stuff or remembering this fact, you just stick with it. Like, unless you have a hundred percent, like, okay, I feel a hundred percent my head that it seems to be VFib. Yep. 100%. Like you, that's why I'm, I'm forcing you to tell me, right. If you're like, if you're like, Oh, it has to be V fit because X, Y, and Z. And I'm confident then I'm like, you got to change it. Right. But if you're like, Oh, I think when you say, I think a lot, um, you have to always be asking yourself, am I making up information or is it actually true? Right. Because sometimes when you're like, Oh, I think I remember I read this, this, and this, right. It might not be true. Right. So I want mm -hmm. you to work in discrete kind of, you know, absolute facts when you try and change your answers.
Okay, makes sense.